Thank you very much. I want to thank you, Senator Schatz, and you, Senator Hyde-Smith, for your work on this. And I also want to thank their committee. This committee is the place where we remind ourselves that we're all in it together. We're all Americans. There but for the grace of God goes the disaster that, that hit you uh, in Hawaii, Senator Schatz, and the, uh, the uh, terrible tornadoes and hurricanes you've had in Mississippi. So you bring us together and remind us that we're all one. Uh, in July, Vermont experienced several days of nonstop extreme rainfall. It wasn't a storm. It was just rain that wouldn't stop. We had nearly nine inches of rain in a few days, causing flash flooding, washouts, and mudslides. One community, Cabot, had, uh, Cabot, Vermont, had damaged every single road in its town, and our capital, Montpelier, was completely underwater. Many businesses still have not reopened. It's been terrible. In total, almost 3,000 homes were damaged. There were almost 90 road closures. The Vermont se Severe Weather Flooding and Loss and Damage Survey results estimate that 28,000 acres of ag land uh, of concern to Mr. Bozeman uh, were impacted. Hundreds of small businesses have, businesses have filed claims. President Biden and his administration acted very quickly uh, the FEMA administrator did a tremendous job, uh, was there on scene to provide reassurance and help right away. And our governor, Phil Scott, worked with state and local leaders and FEMA officials, and they got to work very effectively. And our delegation worked together to replenish uh, FEMA's disaster relief fund, something you helped very much on, uh, Senator Schatz. So those are dangerously low and need to be replenished. And while I'm grateful we were successful in uh, supplementing the DRF, more must be done to give our communities the support they need to rebuild. The DRF is far from enough for the farmers, for the small businesses, and the communities in my state and across the United States that have faced these disasters. When I toured damage in Vermont, I saw firsthand the way my community came together. And that's what's inspiring to all of us. Somehow they endure. But six months after the floods and the waters have receded, but thanks to the hard work of our first responders, uh, community leaders, neighbors, and FEMA, and the generosity and kindness of strangers, Vermont is getting back on its feet. But if it was your farm, if it was your home, if it was your business, it's still really tough. Across the state, we're in the early stages of rebuilding those locations. But our small communities that don't have millions of dollars to rebuild dams without diverting from other needs like housing and health care are having a real trouble. That's why the Community Development Block Grant that you've been talking about, that Disaster Recovery and Community Development Block Grant mitigation funds are absolutely so critical. Your statement, Senator Hyde-Smith, is exactly right. They give us the flexibility that we need to rebuild now and prepare for the next flooding disaster. And it will come. We know that. Vermont needs substantial CDBG DR money to help low and moderate income communities fill in the gaps of insurance and state assistance. This money will help the state repair wastewater treatment plants, drinking water systems that suffered substantial damage. It'll take over $50 million to repair five dams in Ludlow, Vermont, small town, that were damaged by the floods. In Johnson, Vermont, wastewater treatment plant, which was washed out during the flood, is now running on what they call Frankenstein mode. It could fail at any time, a real catastrophe for that small community. And the CDBG funds will help impacted homeowners. Vermont is struggling with the lowest vacancy rates, a problem all across the country, and we need that help. Vermont has relied on the CDBG DR funds in the past to recover better from natural disasters. After Tropical Storm Irene in 2011, the town of Waterbury secured some of those funds to move buildings that had a history of flooding, and it really worked. They were, did not get impacted by the recent flooding. So these mitigation funds can help prevent future disasters. And I also want to say, by the way, New Hampshire this is happening as far away as Florida and Hawaii, but also New Hampshire. For instance, New Hampshire communities in Sullivan and Cheshire County are also in need of resources to recover from the flooding. So failing to prior prioritize disaster funding now will leave our constituents feeling that their government has abandoned them. And that's a challenge. We don't want folks to have that feeling. 
Thank you again for hosting this hearing. And Chairman Schatz, it has been great working with you in your office under these incredibly challenging circumstances facing the people we represent. Thank you for the good work of this committee and the opportunity to testify.